for RCR TV. I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi Fi, small cell, and much more. Comscope. Thinking beyond today's technology to help you make the best decision for your network and your business. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. Now, our uh, regular viewers will know that we take the show on the road quite often. This week's no exception. We're up here at the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas for CTIA's annual Super Mobility Show. This is a really big show for the telecom industry where you see lots of major announcements and product launches. This year was really no exception and arguably the biggest announcement that we heard came from Verizon Wireless, who really upped the ante when it comes to 5G trials and the ultimate commercialization. Up until now, we had all been waiting for 2018 to see the first major trials at the Pyeongchang Olympics there in South Korea. Now Verizon has brought that back to 2016 for some limited trials at two of their facilities here in the US. Now a big part of 5G, which has yet to be standardized, is creating uh, ultra dense metropolitan networks that can really support the capacity that's needed when huge groups of people converge in you know, a particular geographic area. So in this first clip, we're gonna hear from Brian Meekum, who is a VP of Verizon's uh, Network West area. He's going to talk to us about a small cell deployment that's underway in San Francisco ahead of the Super Bowl next year. Essentially, Verizon's adding a lot of capacity in downtown San Francisco by deploying 400 small cells there in conjunction with Extinet systems. So this is sort of the first step in creating that densification that we expect to be a big part of a 5G standard. Let's hear from Brian about what Verizon's doing in preparation for the Super Bowl. All right, thanks, Sean. I appreciate you asking that question. We're, uh, we're working pretty hard in San Francisco right now. Uh, part of our densification efforts for Super Bowl, we're getting ready uh, with a 400 small cell plan in the downtown San Francisco area. Densification is important because people like to use their smartphones. People like to use them for almost everything. We talk about people who are cord cutters, well, there's an awful lot of cord nevers in uh, downtown San Francisco. Those people want to be able to use their devices for video more and more. Almost 87% of our traffic now is on LTE and uh, we're finding more and more traffic coming from video as well. So uh, it's important for us to be able to have hot spotting capabilities for where crowds gather, especially in an environment like Super Bowl where they're going to be downtown on the 50th mile. It's going to be a very exciting event. We also have just a lot of people that come to San Francisco all the time that want to be able to enjoy that, that beautiful area downtown. So uh, densification, getting dark fiber out there, getting the small cells in there, that's the direction we're headed. That's what's going to give us our ability to deliver to our customers on the promise of reliability. Very nice. And, um, uh, I had seen in the, in the notes sent over that you also deal with distributed antenna systems. Yep, yep. So distributed antenna systems, you're talking about things like outdoor DAS, and also you're probably referencing what we call CRAN, cellular radio access networks. And we're finding a lot of success also in setting up CRAN in downtown San Francisco. Uh, it's helping us with the ability to put what we call remote radio heads or high powered radio heads that don't have to have a whole lot of real estate underneath them. And the, the help that that brings us is the ability to not have to disrupt a downtown area with a macro cell site, and it also gives us the ability to deploy with dark fiber, and it gives us the ability to prepare for future technologies. So really what, what he's talking about there is using small cells to deliver capacity to a point. And this is a really big deal right now, both indoors and outdoors, as cell phones, smartphones become increasingly ubiquitous. In this next clip, we're going to hear from another Brian, this time Brian Dar, who's the CEO of Mosaic Solutions. This is a software as a service provider, and they do some really interesting things with mapping of data visualization. First thing Brian's going to talk to us about is their tower source product, which lets you see physically where network assets are and you can overlay coverage maps with tower locations, rooftop antennas, fiber lines. It's a really interesting tool for people who are trying to do comparative analysis of carrier coverage. And on the other end of that, it's a great tool if you were uh, interested in some speculative real estate, maybe buying some sites uh, for potential macro build outs later on. 
Then the second thing Brian is going to show us is their product called Signal Insights. And what this is, is essentially a mobile app that you can use indoors to see exactly how much throughput you have at a given physical location inside. So this is important because as we continue to see small cell and DAS rollouts pick up steam, it's a lot of money to drop this equipment in the field, so it's really important to have a, a very good idea of what the gaps in your interior coverage and capacity are. So let's hear from Brian Dar about that. Hi, I'm Brian Dar. I'm with Mosaic Solutions, and uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit today about Tower Source and Signal Insights, two products that we're uh, showcasing here at CTIA. Uh, what you see on the screen here is uh, the Tower Source interface. Uh, we launched this earlier this year, and uh, we've got a couple of exciting announcements uh, uh, just for this show specifically. We've just added 35,000 additional vertical assets that's towers, water tanks, uh, uh, rooftops, almost anything you can put an antenna on, uh, as well as 152,000 unique locations for public safety antennas uh, that are now part of Tower Source. But I'd like to walk you through a little bit uh, of what this will actually do. This is a better, smarter way to research vertical assets. Uh, so if you're in the real estate business, if you're in the tower business, if you're an operator, this is for you. So I've plugged in Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm simply going to zoom into that location. And you can see towers, tower sites here that you can increase in size if you want to make them a little larger or smaller. But as we zoom in, you can then pick a particular location. You can choose that site. And on the left-hand side, it will give you the details of the individual asset, what type of asset it is, what its height is, uh, and other pertinent information. In addition, we have just added, as I mentioned, the public safety sites. So as I turn those off and on, you can see them flash on the screen. They are individual or separate points. And as we choose one of these, it will actually give us the call sign and the tenant uh, for that particular asset. One of the critical questions about tower locations has to do with backhaul. Where the fiber is is critical in making the best decision on exactly uh, where you might best put that tower uh, and be able to economically provide service to it. So we've got uh, a, a couple of uh, choices here. Uh, we can actually turn on individual fiber routes so that you can see this tower in this location is not close to that fiber route, so we've got to continue to look to see if we can find something that is cl will closer serve it. So as people are trying to research these locations, then it puts an enormous amount of information at their fingertips very quickly. We also have a new elevation tool that we've just launched. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here uh, to get a larger picture. And we can actually uh, draw a line from point A to point B. And if we needed to get a microwave link from this point to this point, then it gives us the elevation right here across the bottom of the screen. And you can very quickly tell you know, how many microwave points you might need uh, at a quick view to be able to carry that data from point A to point B. There's traffic information. There's information on individual cellular networks. If we want to turn on, say, let's take a look at T-Mobile's LTE footprint. And you can see where the network could be expanded so that you can actually go look at the individual tower locations that would help them meet those goals. I'd like to jump now to uh, our other product, Signal Insights.
Signal Insights is a, an app that runs on an Android phone, and we have just introduced a new indoor mode to being able to do network performance testing using this app very quickly, very inexpensively, very, very easy to use. The outdoor mode has been available since the product was launched earlier this year, and you can actually go do your drive testing, hooking multiple devices together, one from, say, AT&T, one from Verizon, one from Sprint, et cetera, and it'll show you along that drive test line how each of these networks perform directly against one another. We now can do the same thing on indoor mode. Of course, GPS location is very, very difficult indoor. Uh, it usually doesn't work well at all. So how do we go about actually capturing what kind of a test we're getting within each given location indoors? This is a diagram of a mall, and we actually have what we call tap, test, and go now. So you can pull in a file, a photograph. Uh, you can even use the camera on your phone to take a picture of the blueprints uh, on the engineer's desk at, uh, at the facility. Pull that in and then start actually tapping and testing at each individual location. So as you walk to that spot in the mall, in this case, or in a hotel, or in a, um, uh, a venue such as a stadium, then you can get an accurate measurement on what the customer experience is actually going to be at each area within the venue. This is the drive test model. Uh, you can actually see a given test on the handset, but it also uploads into our dashboard and keeps all of the tests that you've run. You can share them with other people. Uh, you can even email copies of the reports. So I appreciate your time today. I wanted uh, telling you a little bit about Signal Insights uh, as well as our tower source uh, service. And please give us a call if we can provide you any further information. Thank you. So indoor, outdoor, small cell, bass, Wi-Fi, cellular. Right now, what we're really seeing is broad convergence of these different network elements. And once this is done for the end user, you're not going to notice the handoff. You're just going to notice an improved cellular experience. So in this next clip, we're going to talk to Derek Peterson, who is the CTO at Boingo Wireless, about network convergence and how Wi-Fi fits into that equation. Let's hear from Derek. So, so the question was, what is 5G and, and how does Wi-Fi fit in? Well, to me, and this is the challenge, nobody's really defined 5G yet. To me, 5G is about convergence. It's about converting, converging all the different network topologies, whether it's LTE or Wi-Fi or uh, any of the other technologies that, are, that help uh, enable those. So when you really think about it, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with uh, venues and we're dealing with locations that are vastly different. Different. So you come to a large location like this and you've got a lot of people in a very dense area. Technologies that fit that kind of uh, environment are better suited for smaller cells which have a lot of capacity and that's Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi with Wave 2 you can get 2 gigabits or more per per individual user. With uh, some of those other technologies, you can't get that way. So if you want high speed uh, in a dense environment, there's a place for Wi-Fi. Now, when you start talking about mobility, there's mobile, and you're talking long distances, LTE starts playing, and then again, it's all about the spectrum and the RF technology. So you've really got to recognize that you need all of it. It's not about one versus the other. It's about really combining it all together and making and choosing the right technology for the situation. When we roll out systems today, we're rolling out DAS, or, uh, small cells, and Wi-Fi. We have locations where we have all three of them playing really well together, and we're going to continue doing that. Well, that was just a little taste of all the things that are going on here at CTIA in Las Vegas. For a lot more content from the show, I'd encourage you to check out rcrwireless.com as well as our RCR TV website and then our RCR Wireless News YouTube channel. We've got a lot more videos up there that are really give you a taste of what's going on here at the show. And so thanks for joining us at CTIA, and we'll see you back here next week for Head That Happens. 
HatNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HatNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HatNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.